All right. We are going to go through the mechanism part for quiz one from chapter 11 for Organic Chemistry 2 for the spring 2019 semester. And it's asked us to propose a mechanism for the following transformation. And so we're taking an alcohol, we have a double bond, we got an, um, some sulfuric acid present. And so it's asking us to propose a mechanism to get from one end to the other here. So uh, some things to identify, right? We have a strong acid. We have an alcohol. We have a double bond, right? We have some heat around. Um, here's something Here's something that's interesting, right? Or something to, that we'll start to pick up, right? You've got methyl group, methyl group, methyl group, right? We see that the methyl groups all start on the same carbon here. We'll mark it in red, right? But then at the end of it, right, at the end of it, the methyl groups are on different carbons. So that means there has to be some kind of shift present. And if we know there has to be some kind of shift, we know we have to generate a carbocation around the, along the way, right? which is not unusual. If we have an acid, we typically are going to see a uh, cation formed along the way unless there's some something preventing it from happening, right? So not too unusual to expect a shift, especially since that carbon mark in red is quaternary, right, with alkyl groups, right? So it's a very common, let's say, feature that we end up seeing, okay? But as with some of the things that I've talked to you guys about, if we have an acid, make it act like an acid, and it usually acts like an acid in the first step. So here is sulfuric acid, right? Lone pair from our oxygen is going to grab a carbon, excuse me, grab that hydrogen. So we have this, boom, boom, boom. boom. All right, there's our alcohol here, and our alcohol now is protonated. And we'll do the we'll do that positive there. Okay, so what do we see now? Right after our first step, I'll draw a there it is, right? That step goes to here. And so, what do we notice at this point? Now we have an oxygen with a positive charge. Right, so we generated a good leaving group. Right, we we turned an alcohol into uh, the components of water, a good leaving group. And so it's going to leave. Right, so let's make that water leave. I'm going to do a technical shortcut here, so I don't have to redraw it all the time. I'm going to try to at least. Okay, so after that leaves. We leave behind a carbocation, right? The water left, we end up having a carbocation there. Every time we generate a carbocation, we pause and ask ourselves the quintessential question, can I do a rearrangement, right? So uh, we look next door, we see a quaternary carbon, quaternary next door to a, pro, uh, to a, a secondary carbocation that's set up for a alkyl shift okay so alkyl shift i'm going to right we're going to shift that alkyl group so i will just do a quick touch up here there's my two groups there and there's my alkyl shift that i changed and my carbocation sitting now on that tertiary carbon fantastic Okay, so now we've gotten to the point where we have a uh, stable tertiary carbocation. Seems pretty good. Now we know we have to cyclize this, right? We know we have to cyclize this group. So one, if we start counting here at our carbocation, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? There's six carbons between that carbocation and my double bond. And remember that we can use our pi bonds from a double bond to reach out and grab a carbocation. So we're going to send that lone pair over here. We're going to send that lone pair over there. So I'm going to continue drawing this down here. Right, so here's my original six-membered ring. I made a bond from this carbon up here. To my carbon there in red, right? So my carbon in red is right there now. 
My carbon in red had two methyl groups coming off of it. Next to my carbon in red, I got my purple alkyl group there. Right, so if I just go back, I didn't want to clutter it up at the beginning. Right, so there's my six carbons, counting one through six. Right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Now the big question is, where is my positive charge that's left over? Right. I used my pi bond uh, here. Right. I used my pi bond here. Right to make the bond between one and six. I use my pi bond there to make the bond, excuse me, I use my pi bond in purple to make the bond between one and six. So I took a bond away from carbon number five. Right? I took a bond away from uh, carbon number five there. So I've got my positive charge left over here on carbon number five. So we have to deal with that number five there. So what's gonna happen is, uh, let's do, Let's do blue here. Something's going to come along and grab that hydrogen right there. It could be the water that got kicked off. It could be water that got kicked off here in this step. It could be the conjugate base right here that got kicked off in the first step. Either one of those. It's more likely going to be the conjugate base, but, you know, who knows. So we're just going to do a generic B- minus here, some kind of base. Either the water or the conjugate base is going to come around. It's going to grab that hydrogen, and the hydrogen bond there, right, the bond between the carbon and the hydrogen is going to fall down into a new pi bond. So here's my two rings. There's my methyl, there's my methyl, there's this methyl here, and there's my pi bond that got reformed there. Good stuff, okay? So somewhat tricky, somewhat tricky mechanism. The trickiest part probably coming here, right? Probably coming from this step here, seeing that that alkene can open up and grab that pi bond, right? Excuse me, the alkene can open up and grab that carbocation. All right, I'm going to zoom out. That way you guys can see the entire exam, excuse me, the entire quiz. If you have any questions, we can go to my office. We'd be happy to answer those for you guys.